Have you ever wondered why you cannot tickle yourself? No? Try it. Tickle yourself? Yeah? Tickle, let your neighbor tickle you? Okay. Yeah? I see a few people doing it. Okay. Believe me, there is a difference. How can this be? Now, this is not a trivial question. The answer to this question reveals an important mechanism of our brain. Once you understand it, you'll understand yourself better. And you'll understand other people better. The answer has everything to do with predictions. You cannot tickle yourself because you already know that the tickling sensation will appear. So in your brain, a prediction signal goes to the areas receiving the tickling sensation, telling them, as it were, you don't have to pay attention. It's not important. And it's not important because you know it already. So it helps you to focus on the information that is new. Now, this prediction system did, of course, not develop to prevent you from tickling yourself. It developed because it's a very efficient way of information processing. And because efficiency is everything, prediction is everywhere. Especially in social situations. Situations in which other people are involved. With tickling yourself, you're trying to predict your own behavior. In social interactions, you're trying to predict other people's behavior. Not as accurate as you predict your own behavior, but we are quite good. So on the basis of sometimes superficial characteristics like gender, race, appearance, we predict what other people will be like and we adjust our behavior accordingly. So perceiving is actually believing. And this is a very healthy, efficient system in our brain. To put it even stronger, if you cannot use your prediction system, you will become psychotic. So, the prediction system is powerful and healthy, but it has also negative consequences. The power of prediction may impact negatively on yourself and on other people. Consider boys and girls. In the Netherlands, as in many other countries, there's quite a big gender gap, with girls much less likely to choose exact sciences at school than boys. Now imagine this girl taking her first exam in physics, and she fails, and she is upset. So to comfort her, her teacher tells her, you can always drop it next year. Don't worry. She comes home and her mother says, Oh, honey, I was terrible at physics when I was your age. If she had been a boy failing her first exam, much more likely for being told off, you lazy, make sure you pass next time. Now, this is really important because the implicit message to the girl is, physics is not within your reach, but it doesn't matter. Now, don't think this is a far-fetched example. Predictions at the level of society, predictions at the level of individual teachers and parents do impact on performance. And don't think that it doesn't hold for you. Don't think that you have an open mind. Really, tickle yourself. You can't. So if predictions are so powerful, and if their effect occurs largely outside our awareness, what can we do? Is there a way to avoid the negative consequences? May there even be a way to use the power of predictions constructively? There is. And the positive news is, it's a very simple method. You can start working on it right here, right now, and you will. The negative side, the method takes effort 
it requires daily practice? The answer is predict progress. Predict that behavior may change, that abilities may improve. How? Imagine a little baby, like other children, at the age of six months, he starts bubbling. But unlike other children, he doesn't move on to the next stage. Uh, at the age of two, he's still making the dada sounds. When he was a baby, his dadas were an indication of his future ability to communicate. And whenever he said Dada, his parents talked back. Dada, Papa, Mama, are you thirsty? Are you hungry? But now that he is two, his Dadas have become a sign of his inability. For sure, the child has a language disorder. He may never be able to speak properly. And the people in his environment have gradually lost faith. No longer do they talk back. No longer do they respond to his dadas. Apparently, th this child cannot learn to communicate. We don't know. What we do know is that our predictions matter. If we believe that this child cannot learn to communicate, we will behave accordingly. We will not try to respond to his dadas. We will no longer talk to him like we did when, when he was a baby. But what if his language is not disordered, but delayed? What if he will be able to communicate, but at a much later age? In that case, we will continue to talk to him. We will continue to respond to his dadas, thereby and this is important, giving him ample opportunity to learn. So this is what I mean by predicting progress. It doesn't mean that everyone should be able to learn everything, but it means that things may improve. It means that people with Parkinson may dance. So, now that you know what, how powerful predictions are and what predicting progress means, I think you must be about ready to apply it to yourself. So, before you do so, two rules. The first is, don't apply it to your whole life at once. Pick one ability. One ability that you're not so good at, but that you would like to change. So pick something that is important to you. If you're not so good at knitting, but knitting is not so important to you, choose something else. So, you've got something in your mind, an ability that you would like to improve, something that you think of you will never learn? Okay, I'll give you my personal example. Parallel parking. I wasn't sure whether I should mention it because I don't want to reinforce any existing gender stereotypes, but anyway, let's go for it. I hate parallel parking. So I will do whatever I can to avoid the small parking slots. I would rather walk an extra mile on these shoes to avoid these parking slots, to avoid showing my inability to the rest of the world. And if I cannot avoid it, I will try to forget as quickly as possible about the six attempts that I needed, about why my car still ended at the curb. I will never learn parallel parking. But what if my current ability is not the end state? What if I can learn it? What if I try to predict progress? It, progress won't occur if I continue avoiding the small parking slots. Progress will require that I use these. It will require that I go over the reasons for needing six attempts. 
it will maybe even require looking up those how-to movies on the web. It's a simple method, but it costs effort. And in this case, probably a scratched card or two. But the message is, we don't know the destination, so we should focus on the journey. Thank you. <laughs>